Welcome back to HANA Developer Channel. My name is Rikan. In this series of videos, we're looking at native HANA developments in Access Advanced Applications using Web ID for HANA. In today's video, I'm going to explain apps and services created for DB module in Web ID for HANA. I kind of explained this topic in my previous videos, but it wasn't very detailed. So I thought of explaining this topic with a simple DB module creation and MTA project creation in my Web ID for HANA. I also prepared a blog on this topic. You can find this in the community forum, Apps and Services of DB Module in Access MTA Project. This is the first blog of this series. It's a good start to understand with navigations. Let's get back to the tool and see how these services are created and, and the apps are created in the backend. And this is my Web ID for HANA installed on HXC, X Plus Edition. I'm gonna start creating a, a basic uh, MTA project here project from template MTA project application I'm going to name this as MTA apps and services I'm going to give this description same I'm going to choose the space I have two spaces here I'm going to pick development space and say next and finish so now my MTA application a project has been created. I'm going to start creating a DB module inside that. From the context menu, choose database module. I'm going to name this as DB. Say next. And then give, I don't want to give the schema name. I just wanted to leave this as a blank. I'll, I'll explain this topic in the later part of this video. And the database version, I'm going to pick the latest version. There are the previous versions of HANA, but I'm going to choose the SP03, which is the latest on HXC, on my HXC, HXC version. Not choosing the build, out, build module after creation, so I'll do it manually after this one. So next, and then say finish it. So with that, I have created a DB module inside my MTA project. Let's take a look at the YAML file now. There are two different editors for ML file, mta.ml file is the, the graphical editor and the second one is the code editor. So it's your convenience how you wanted to understand the ML file configuration. You could do it from you, the graphical editor or the code editor. This code editor is much flexible and more easy way to update the configurations but you can start with MT editor to understand it and then come to the code editor to make more changes to it. Okay, let's start with MT editor of graphical. So here you can see modules and resources. So the module is the one I have chosen to create DB module. The DB is the name of the DB module name. I also see the resources. It is the service which is created uh, automatically by the tool when a DB module is being created. The service holds the HDI container service instance to keep the database artifacts of this DB module. Let's take a look at the parameters of this resource or service. This is the name of the resource. Uh, it is automatically taken as HDI underscore DB. DB is the module name what we have given for this particular uh, database module. You can update or you can modify this DB module resource to any of your convenient name. So I'm going to choose services and say OK. And then if you go back to the modules and see that this is not updated yet, it's a technical glitch. Uh, you will have to switch back to these editors to get this updated back. So I'm going to just go to the code editor and then come back to my MT editor and then it's getting up. Just the technical uh, bug that it's, it's not uh, fixed yet. So you just need to refresh the screen to uh, update the, um, the resource name in the modules or resources tab. Okay, let's go back to the resources again. So now we just rename the name of the resource or service name. And let's take a look at the properties of the resource as a key and the value. These properties are going to represent this resource or expose this resource wherever it is being used inside the MTA project. So the 
key of the uh, resource is HDI container name and the value is a parameter value. Whatever the value of this resource is going to be in the target space, the service name is going to hold that value. So I'm going to represent the service name uh, wherever uh, I wanted to access this particular resource. Now we see uh, the modules and resources. So what happens uh, when I created the DB module, the tool automatically made this resource as a required object for this module. So this particular uh, resource is being assigned to the module as in the required section. So you can see that resource. Let's take a look at the code editor also to understand in a different view. Go to code editor. So you can see that this is the module and I have a DB module and it will come to the required section after but just before going to the required section we wanted to understand resources. Firstly a resource will be created with the name HDI underscore DB resource. The properties of the resource is the container name uh, is going to be uh, not fixed it's going to be dynamic whatever the container name it is going to hold it will be coming into uh, this variable because the service names can be different in each uh, space or each environment what you're working and then uh, this resource is being assigned as a required module to this deep, uh, uh, required resource or service to this DP module. So that's how the resource and module are wired together. Now let's understand uh, how the apps and services are created when I build this uh, DB module. I'm going to choose DB module and say um, build it. So when I'm doing this build on my web ID workspace, it's a private build, which means it is only happening to my developer workspace. So um, the apps and services created in private build will be different from apps and services getting created uh, when actual deployment taking place. We will come to the actual deployment uh, in a minute. So let's see how the private build will happen. The private build is isolated and it is different for each developer. When the other developer is working on the this kind of private build, the other developer is going to get um, different version of it, different uh, name to the resources and applications because it's just private to the particular person's workspace. Now my build has been completed. Let's take a look at the apps and services from uh, access command line tools. So I feel more comfortable in looking at the services and apps from the command line tools. So I open the command prompt and I'm going to access I'm going to issue a command called access services. Let's take a look at the services first. So I ran access services command. I can see there are a bunch of services which I've got it from my previous exercises. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to minimize the screen. Uh, there are some of them missing so that I can see it better. Okay, here we go. Uh, my service name uh, with the private build completion. It is created as my username prefixed and a technical GUID followed by project and the uh, service name what we have or resource name what we have given. That's the service instance created and it is bound to DI Builder app. So any service we are creating it is by default going to bound to the DI Builder app when the private build is being taken place. Now let's take a look at the access apps. The applications status after the private build has been completed. There will be no change to the application status because there is nothing um, um, getting created when you do the private build. Okay, now let's do the the real or actual deployment. I'm going to uh, grab the MTA project and say uh, build it. So it's going to generate an mtar file for me. I'm going to grab that mtar file and then deploy it using command line tools. So this is going to be cleaner uh, deployment and it's going to generate the apps and services uh, can be used by any of the developers in the project. So it's been completed. Uh, my uh, 
MTA archives will show the so I'm going to access the archive file this is my mtar file so I'm going to take this file to my personal desktop say uh, export it it's been exported now and I'm going to take this into um, the personal folder so that I can deploy it I'm going to put this in the deployments folder and then deploy this okay I'm going to run the command called access deploy and the path which is this one and then mtar file name that's going to be I'm going to grab this from here just put this and say dot mtar Now the deployment starts and then um, it's going to generate uh, apps and, in, and service instances uh, as part of the clear or cleaner deployment process. The deployment has been completed now. I'm going to run the, I'm going to check what happened to the services. I'm issuing the command access services. I'll see a new service instance created after this uh, real deployment happened. So you can find that uh, the service name as HDI underscore DB. This is the new service created as part of the real uh, cleaner deployment. Previous one is always associated as the my username prefixed and some technical GUID. And now the cleaner one is getting uh, with the name of the resource name itself. And then you can also find that it's bound to an application called DB. Let's take a look at what is the DB application is about. For that, I'm going to run the command uh, access apps. It's going to show me all the apps in this particular space. So you can see that a new module actually application is being created in the uh, in this space, which is called DB. So that's the name of the module in my YAML file. So this is being created as DB and then it's most of the time it's going to be in the stopped uh, state all the time. And I'm going to check again here. So this instance is being bound to the DB module uh, as part of the YAML file configuration because we said that this service will be bound to, as it's going to be required a resource for the DB module. So you can put the service as a resource and a module as an application uh, and you can use these terms interchangeably uh, as in the runtime. Okay, this topic is being explained in this document uh, with clear navigation so you can find this uh, logical uh, uh, mapping from the resource to the DB module uh, from this picture on this block. Okay, now I'm going to uh, access my DB Explorer to see how these services are going to look like. Say so I'm going to add a new database. So I'm going to add a new HDI container database. Scroll down to the bottom to see the new ones. So there are a couple of them should be available for now, for me now. They are um, HDI reporting, sorry, a, you can find the service here that's my private build HDI service created with my username prefixed and the resource name uh, followed after the technical GUID you can choose this one say and okay it's going to get added here sometimes it doesn't show here I just need to refresh um, the page of the DB explorers to get that uh, seen on my uh, DB Explorer. Now I see that. So that's the private build uh, HDI container is being created. And I also wanted to add the container or the service which has been created as part of the cleaner deployment. You can find that with the cleaner name HDI underscore DB services and then say add it. 
it's going to come as another HDA container database. So this is your private build. Each developer will have something like this uh, on his or her uh, workspace of Web IDE. And the one which I just added, I'm just going to refresh that to see here, will be common to everyone uh, who is working in um, this particular space. Okay, since we are already uh, in DB Explorer, I wanted to explain the topic of um, schema. So you remember when we were giving the DB module configuration, I wasn't giving any value to the schema, I just left it as blank. So if I do that, if I don't specify the schema name, system or the tool is going to generate a schema. Let's take a look at what is the schema name for the cleaner deployment. I'm going to choose the cleaner deployment and say select uh, current uh, schema from dummy. It's going to show me um, a technical GUID as the schema name. Uh, the same way, I'm going to choose the private build one and say SQL window and issue the same SQL command. And it's going to show me the schema get created for the, the pri private build. So the schema name is the, the project and the module name underscore one. Sorry, the project underscore the resource name underscore one. Uh, for the second developer, is using this uh, code base and is going to or she's going to get underscore two and three and etc so that's how the schema name is isolated the container is isolated for each developer to call the database artifacts independently but for the cleaner version the schema name is not going to change uh, it is going to be always this one this is the case I explained when there is no schema parameter has been given Let's say if I give the schema parameter value there in my YAML file, then my cleaner one, my real deployment will have that particular name uh, shown up here. Okay, And my private build will have uh, the name I gave in the YAML file, underscore one. So it's not going to generate uh, some, uh, something like a technical GUID uh, like this. Uh, as shown in this example. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but I wanted to show you from my blog uh, how does it work. So this is my schema parameter. So if I just add the config schema to my resources saying reporting or any of the schema name if I provide it, then my private build is going to have reporting underscore one and reporting underscore two as the name of the schemas and my a deployment of application is going to have the name what I've given the schema as the uh, schema name. You can do that uh, by modifying the uh, YAML file, which is here. I'm going to, can just add the schema name param configuration parameter here and then see how does it look like in my DB Explorer uh, for cleaner one as well as my private build. Right, it's not really big um, activity to you can do uh, after. So that's about the first part of uh, understanding application services in XSA Advanced. And in my next video or session, I will explain uh, the cross schema services and how the apps are getting created with respect to cross schema services and service replacement uh, parameters and etc. Also we look at the target container configuration in YAML file. Uh, several types of uh, configurations inside my MTA YAML file. Uh, we'll look at them and also we'll, we'll see how the apps and services are affected with those configurations done in this YAML file. Thank you very much. I hope it is very helpful and for detailed course and recordings on these topics please reach out to me on my email ID, surumpallis at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye for now.